I truly believe that Mood Springs here is one of the most popular and prevalent Piston Cup sponsors and it has been for over a decade now, starting with the release of Race Damage Mood Springs here. That's right, we all know who he is, we all know why he's so special, and it's not just the fact that they made this bent up mangled race car that flew across our screens, it's because he is pretty much almost the rarest release ever. And when I say release, that's retail, you know, at a store, was available in stores. And so I do believe El Matador beats it out because that was a deluxe and it was internationally only. Race Damage Moon Springs was here in the United States. The target that you go to for groceries, the target that you see a million Darla Vandersons, Lee Races, and Matthew True Bluma Cruz at, that target may very well have had race damaged mood springs 13 years ago on that very peg. The problem is, he's way, way more popular than those three characters. I was very fortunate to get one back then. They go for about $300 nowadays, so yeah, good luck getting it. Everyone asked me, do you think they'll re-release race damaged mood springs? It's certainly possible. They did race damage the king last year, but I'm gonna go with no. I'm gonna go with no. I think Mattel knows how rare it is, and I think they're going to keep it that way. I mean, what benefit to them is to you know recreate this model from Thailand now, this very, very unique model that they can't replicate any place else, and to just, you know, water down the value of something they released before. So I'm gonna say no to that, but welcome back to Pissing Cup Teams. This is episode 13, I believe. You know, it's funny. Let me tell you a quick little behind the scenes story here before we get into it. I just recorded episode 11, which was Little Turkey Pistons, and you're probably wondering, well, why isn't this episode 12 then? I'm like, well, I can't do two dark blue teams back to back. It just doesn't look good on the playlist, right? <laughs> so I don't know what I'm going to do for episode 12, probably something like colorful, you know? You guys already know what happened because it already came out, but right now I don't. You know something I don't. That's so weird. Time travel. We're going to dive right in. As you can see, we're also doing the review on the pavement here, which again, I might have done in episode 12. Who knows? It's so weird you know, since I'm recording them backwards. But in the Little Torquey Pistons episode, I did it on the grass or the desert here. So obviously, as per usual, we're going to start with the Cars 1 racer, Chuck Armstrong, the <laughs> man himself who took all that beating that we'll get to momentarily. This is the Motor Speedway of the South version of him, as you can see, 277EA. He's hanging in there. You can kind of tell that the hood decal is starting to crinkle up a little bit. It's ready to crack in some places, but it is holding on and it feels great. You know, these Motor Speedway of the South cars can really like slip out of your hands. That's how glossy they are. But I really like this guy. He's probably in like my top 15 favorite piston. You know what? Top 12. Top 12, yeah. Mood Springs logo right there. The M is obviously meant to be a spring, which is so cool. Black rims, which is... Is that accurate? No, yeah. He's supposed to have blue ones like race damage Mood Springs has. So that's a little odd. Can't believe they got that wrong. He's got contingency sponsors there, which look pretty good. 3-3, three, three, another spring pun like a word pun basically wow that's so cool that they were able to incorporate that pixar was at the top of their game in my opinion when they did all of these original sponsors for cars back in 2006 and i'm sure they probably developed these you know well in the 2004 2003 even isn't that wild to think that mood springs the idea has been around for almost 20 years maybe and it's possible because they are developing these movies well, well before you see the first trailer and, you know, obviously well, well before the movie comes out. Now, there is a Thailand variant of Chuck Armstrong. I don't have one loose, so maybe in the future I will do a review of that. We'll see if they ever re-release it. So, yeah, I guess we're just going to start off with the Race Damage Mood Springs here because he is a variant of Chuck Armstrong, believe it or not. A variant of a Piston Cup racer, not McQueen, not Chick Hicks, not <laughs> the King, and not Thailand. Just really a work of art. That is the best way to describe this guy. I reviewed him solo 
several, several years ago, and then I reviewed him in Throwback Thursday, a series on my channel that I don't really do anymore a couple years ago. So I'll leave the link for that in the description if you want a more thorough review and discussion about this guy. But a masterpiece. That is really the only way you could describe it. He is 110% accurate to the movie. I mean, we saw him skidding across the pavement, but this is when he's being towed by tow truck Tom and belches out, put me here or whatever. I can still race coach. Wow. And I love how he's telling that to the tow truck, not even his coach. That just goes to show that he was probably concussed. <laughs> Mood Springs logo all battered. You know, you got the tarmac scraping up on. He does have a moth play right here to emulate that expression. He's got one eye barely squinting open. Of course, the blue wheels. I mean, just look at that curvature of the like side. I mean, ugh. again, it's beautiful. Pool cartoonist. Just have a moment of silence to appreciate this car. I think objectively it has to rank in the top 10 of all time. Now a lot of people will message me, is my race damage mood springs a prototype? It doesn't have a date stamp. Yeah, I don't think many of them did and it's weird because they didn't have a Mattel marking either. Like this one just says Disney Pixar China. Now people are going to be like, well, it's a factory custom. No, no, no. They didn't even do factory customs until like 2011-12. Oh my gosh. I also did a review of a prototype of Race Damage Mood Springs that I'll also link hopefully in the description below. Now speaking of prototypes, this is a canceled Mood Springs pity that was supposed to come out in 2009. The fans have collectively pretty much named him Lance Lugnut. That name is entirely fan made, but pretty much wherever you go, that is where or what he is referred to as. It's a good name. I don't mind it. This is a much darker blue than actually it looks. Yeah, it's still darker than Chuck Armstrong. Darker than my custom Mood Springs Pity here that I had Jim Scavenger make before I was able to obtain the canceled version, which I just got this canceled version like a year and a half ago after hunting for it for years. It was on the top of my list for canceled cars that I wanted to obtain, truly. I never thought I would be able to get it either, so I'm very, very lucky, very, very grateful. But, you know, after I got the N2 Cola Pity after I got Easy Idle Crew Chief, Gaspin Semi. I was like, I want the Mood Springs Pity. And now here I am. I have all of the canceled Easy Idle Pities. I have the N2 Cola Crew Chief. I have another N2 Cola canceled Pity. And that goes to show you a lot of people, you know, ask me, how do you get these canceled cars? How do you get prototypes? You just got to know people. You got to be at the right place at the right time. And to do that, you kind of have to be like, there for a very, very long, continuous strand of time. You know, I have been hunting for these consistently, never took a break, just dead set on it for like seven years now. You know, I started getting these canceled cars in like 2015, 2016. And so I guess it's almost eight now. And I never let up. So whenever something came across, I was ready to buy it. You know, I was ready. I was there. I was ready to pounce. And that's the key thing. You can't just jump in, you know, and expect to get something immediately. Sure, there's a few on eBay, but, you know, those prices aren't great and they might not be the ones you want or they might not be even the coolest one. This toolbox is from Jim Scavenger, by the way, and was to go along with this custom that he did using a Stacy. So, you know, if you just commit to it, be patient. I mean, the same thing applies to anything that has some rarity. Like my Battle Force 5 Hot Wheels collection, I could have easily have obtained everything if I had been collecting them since like 2015 or whatever, but I just started in like fall of 2021. And here I am, January 2023, I'm missing like two. And so you just got to be, you just got to be patient and you got to commit to what you're hunting for. All right, we have a couple of crew chiefs here. Of course, the factory custom pickup. Now, as I said in the Little Torquey Pistons video, they have done these for about two thirds of the racers along with like a fabulous Hudson Hornet one. 
And Mood Springs was one of the first that they did. They used the expression of the racer, so you can see it matches pretty much. So like on a leakless truck, it'll have the expression of leakless or like the eyes of Claude Scruggs. Mood Springs 33, black wheels. This is one of their better ones, I would say, just in terms of quality. It's got really nice paint. And who knows, the quality might have decreased on the ones that they've made since then, or since this one, because I got this one years ago, but this one is really nice. And this crew chief is a, this one is a handmade, handcrafted custom that is very colorful. I love the expression on it, you know, he's burrowing his eyes there, he's like, you know, Chuck, get your butt in gear, what the hell are you doing out there? And again, he went for the mood springs on the hood and 33 on the sides, which I don't believe would be accurate. Or maybe it is actually, this one might be accurate. But usually the crew chiefs, of course, have the logos on the sides and they have the numbers nowhere, right? So I don't know. There is an official image of the mood springs chief. So I guess that will answer it. Blue rims though, that would be accurate. I wonder what he used there for the, all that red to be there. Ugh. Putting this guy back together, it looks like it was a hassle. But yeah, this is a nice custom, even painted the like headphones and the microphone there, blue. Coolio, Dud Throttleman. This guy's one of my favorite Cars 3 stock cars. I just love the design he has, even though, again, it is pretty similar overall to Chuck Armstrong. You know, we were talking about Ralph Carlo from Cars 1 to Cars 3. The Mood Springs logo is just modernized. It's a slightly different font. It has a little bit more shading to it. Doesn't have the outer box. He's a different shade of blue and has this gradient in the front here that makes him look lighter. Now, I did show a prototype of Dud Throttleman in a video a couple years ago of my Cars 3 package prototypes in which Dud is a dark blue and this front area is covered up as well. So he looks even more similar to the original Chuck Armstrong. I do like the blue wheels on him. He's got his contingency sponsors there, 33. Arrow to the pit crew to indicate where to lift him up at to change the tires. Mood Springs logo in the same spots. Gas cap, 33 on the roof as springs. I love the two-tone action here, how it converts to gray. It's like, where did this gray color come from? And he even has some purple in there. Like, look at that. Honestly, wouldn't it have been sick if the next gen was purple and gray? Oh! Or maybe just like, nah, yeah, purple and gray. But honestly, I do believe that Ed Trunken is one of the most similar looking next gens compared to the stock cars. Almost all the next gens, like some of them are irrecognizable, unrecognizable. You know, let's take an example here. Spother stop, quite unrecognizable. Now, Leakless and Mood Springs are pretty close to the stock cars. What's a really good example here? Revengo. Revengo is green and yellow now. Like, when did that happen? So, it wouldn't have been out of the realm of possibility to make this guy gray and purple. But yeah, Ed Trunken, one of the more underrated next gen racers. Again, you have Mood Springs there on the hood. The spring is so simplified now, it doesn't have any curve to it. But you can still kind of see that it is meant to look like a spring indeed. They shaded it properly. The M. On the side here, 33 though is no longer a spring. So they cut down on the fun of that. Blue rims, blue rims. This guy did come with a bonus collector card. And you can kind of really see how his paint sparkles right here. 33 yellow racy rooking stripes. Did I just say like yellow racy rooking stripes? Whoa, that's... That's bad. That's when you know you've been recording too long. <laughs> Mood Springs on the spoiler there. Yeah, I like this next gen. He's probably top 15, top 12 for me. There is an XRS version of him. A pretty rare one, in fact. Only released internationally. The Rocket Racing Ed Trunken. This guy was actually shown at the New York Toy Fair well, well before he was released. And so we all knew he was coming, but <laughs> he took a while to. 
and it's so interesting. This is one of my favorite rocket racers because the blue's a little different. He's got such an interesting expression here. It doesn't look as mean as the next gen. Of course, when you drive this guy, the flames in the back turn. Kind of an odd concept for an XRS series, but they already used up ice, carbon, neon, silver, all that stuff. E.T. This guy's the alien. Synergy Combustor Carbon Cyber Piston Cup are the contingency sponsors. He's got the big wheels there. Light your tires still. He's got these added little blades down here. He's got the center spoiler. No more racing rooking stripes. <laughs> and this one was made in Vietnam on the 181st day of 2020 at the Vietnam SD factory. So yeah, you can see how these tires are pronged. So they hit a little trigger to turn the flames. So pretty cool. It's kind of like the drag racers where you can see the pistons turn in the front blown engine. All right, that leaves just the hauler. Well, here is the pit stop barrier if anyone's interested in that. Pretty basic, doesn't even say mood springs on it. Yeah, it is hauling time. It's like Morbin time, but it's hauling time. Unfortunately, almost none of the haulers are, is that how you say it? Yeah, pretty much none of the haulers got names. So if you guys have a name for this guy, Definitely comment it below. Let's see if I can detach the trailer. Oh, wow, that was way easier than I thought it would be. I remember this guy being very sought after as well. You know, he definitely contributes as well to the prominence of Mood Springs because everybody loves this hauler. He looks sleepy. He's just got a chill vibe. Like the blue just kind of like puts you in that like Kenny G songbird type of mood. Like the DJ putting Mac to sleep type of vibe. And yeah, he is one of the rare haulers that they've ever released for sure. Mood Springs logo up top, 33 on the sides. Mood Springs on the mud flaps there is license plate 73 WJY. And the text above it is too small to read. You know what? They canceled a Mood Springs semi cab in 2017. And I need to go grab that. I need to show that to you guys. You know, I mentioned this in my Little Torquey Pistons episode that when you go and make these videos, like when I go and assemble everything I need, like Avengers Assemble, let's get everything Mood Springs together, all the heroes, I always feel like I'm forgetting something. Like many episodes ago, like I think I forgot an XRS racer and it's like, all right, whatever. And then I get better with it, I get better with it. And of course I knew something would happen and sure enough, I forgot the canceled semi cab from 2017 a part of the Piston Cup Pit Crew series. Now, obviously this is, you know, when Mattel was biting off more than they could chew. Cars 3 was on its way and they thought they could release more than they ended up being able to with the pressure of the third movie. Same exact thing happened between Cars 1 and Cars 2. Although I'd say way more got canceled, literally way more got canceled between Cars 1 and Cars 2. And this is unfortunate because he's got a pretty cool new expression here. The eyes are closer together. His mouth is open now. The Mood Springs decal looks better. It looks a little glossier up there. It's larger. Everything else, though, is the same. He does now have like a slightly different colored mouth plate. And, of course, they sealed off the hole because they don't want you. You know, I always say this is the reason, but I really don't know. Like, is it cheaper? I guess it has to be cheaper to just make it this way than to put a blank hole in it. Or do they truly just not want you to find, like get this and then find the random trailer to pair it with? They want you to buy the whole thing. I don't know, but it is cool they still retain the same license plate. The mud flaps decals are a little awry there, but this is technically a prototype. Let's take a look at the base on this guy. Yeah, man, trying. there's a lot of markings on a canceled release. This one was just the 308th day of 2009. Wow, that is two canceled items in the Mood Springs family. That does not happen often, you know, unless it's like a whole team that gets canceled. Interesting. All right, let's take a look at the trailer here. Very nice. 33 Mood Springs. A 
color toolbox. The wheels are even the proper color. They would get the color of the wheels wrong in these haulers about 50% of the time. Let's flap down. You could pull down these supports here. I can never get this one because it's so hard getting it under the tires, but I got it there. Flip your ramp down. Where's Krusty at? Actually, let's do Dud. <laughs> Krusty is the Boulder Speedway of the South version. So Dud's going to take a ride today. Now you can't fold it all up while he's in there. You got to fold this in, fold those up, push that in, and then bam, he's ready to rock and roll. Mood Springs, racing, 33. License plate's really small down there, but it's there. And it does open from the other side, but the platform does not shift out this way. Never shifts out on the right side. And sometimes these are get a little stiff when you try and close them up. Oh my, this one's having some major issues closing right now. <laughs> I'm hearing sounds that I don't like to hear. Oh Jesus, in the morning guys. What did we do? What on earth happened here? Well, <laughs> while I figured that out, take a look at the roof here. You can see that they only did a decal on the right side, left the side, just the blue plastic. It looks pretty good. I like the two-tone to it. So looking here, like this hinge just seems to be screwed up. And that's why it's not able to fold all the way down. Yeah, it's like mangling the sticker right now because it is touching on it. That's kind of annoying. Oh my goodness, guys. It is all out of whack. All right. Whew. All right, see, that is why, guys, do not open your trailers. <laughs> Keep them shut. Lesson learned. All right, guys, here's the bonus collector card, by the way from Ed Trunken, pretty basic, but it's a nice little background piece. And it even does have a little bit of that purple that we were talking about. So maybe it was an idea at one point that they were tossing around. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below, who is your favorite member of Team Mood Springs? Is it Damaged Race Mood Springs? Is it the Pity? Is it Dud? Is it the Canceled Semi? Those are probably up there for me. I like this Crew Chief a lot. I like the Rocket Racer as well. And Classic Chuck is pretty sweet. It looks like I might have broken my hauler in the process of this, but you know, stuff happens. Stuff happens. And I do it for the review. Do it for the review. <laughs> Whatever it takes. All right. Thank you as always for watching and for the support. I will see you next time for another Piston Cup Teams video and another video in general. Bye now.